Welcome to the History of Rotary Scout Reservation. I'm your host, Ed Keelan, and I'll be taking you through a history of camp. In this episode, we enter the Toot Era, so named since this is the decade when John Tootin began working as Rotary staff, something he would do right through his passing in 2019. So for the first time, there is much more history based on personal accounts. Now Toot's personal anecdotes, no, I can't use that word. Anecdote implies that the story's short. How about narratives? Yeah, Toot's narratives could have their own series, including things like, the store doesn't say open 24 hours except for the bakery camp staff trip to A&P, or driving the camp ambulance into a tree, uh, nearly burning the camp office down deciding which fire extinguisher to use, the eight hole Iroquois latrine, the you're all going to die from mosquitoes staff training session, the litany of duties for the camp's dining hall steward in the 1960s, uh, we always made doing the camp trash dumpster run fun. And my personal favorite, the story of eating an entire loaf of not fully cooked bread. Um, see me personally to, for the details on that one. So anyways, let's get started. Let's begin with the non-program changes. Perhaps the biggest change in the 1960s was the construction of the new dining hall. The current dining hall was built in 1960 prior to the merger of the Uncle Sam and Fort Orange Councils. The Central Fire's place's intent was for the building to be used for year-round camping. Clearly, they hadn't considered how big a heat sink a concrete floor above the ground would be. The metal roof also proved to be insanely loud in rainstorms, but it was much larger and more modern than the dining hall down by the lake. Toot spoke of actually eating meals in two shifts in 1966 and 1967. The building will be named Rotary Scout Training Center, a name that the camp also adopted because it was one of three camps in the United States that served as a training facility for the U.S. contingent to the World Jamboree in Ottawa, Canada in 1949. In addition to a new dining hall, a new residence would be built for a full-time ranger. Prior to this, a caretaker lived in a house near the site of the old Cottrell Fremantle butcher shop discussed in part one. Bush Lodge, as it's officially named, was built in 1968 using funds from the Howard Bush Foundation. Toot was nature director at the time, and he used scouts to clear the area as a conservation project. What they were conserving, I have no idea. Neil Van Buren served as the camp's first full-time ranger. The final non-program related change we'll discuss was the merger of the Fort Orange and Uncle Sam councils in 1962. This would create the Governor Clinton Council. From a camp point of view, this was a merger of Uncle Sam's camp, Rotary, and Fort Orange's camp, Strata. It also brought about a new symbol for Rotary. Uncle Sam was dropped and the Thunderbird was adopted. The Thunderbird would appear in various incarnations from 1962 through the present, with the exceptions of the American Bicentennial in 1976, the 1991 original Twin Rivers patch, which was the same for Rotary, Woodworth Lake, and Saratoga that year, and a patch that Camp Director Don Fremont used in 1992, depicting the old Lakeside Dining Hall. As for program, we still see aquatics, archery, and scoutcraft, but we also have some new additions, or at least programs that we didn't know about prior to the 1960s. We also know that merit badges start to become a more important part of the program. A rifle range was set up at the site of what is now Thunderbird Campsite. Originally the range faced east, and the scouts shot on mats on the ground. Sometimes tarps were set up over the shooting line, but later it was covered with a pavilion. Two, a Stratton camper, as mentioned in part four, was recruited to be the nature director at Rotary. This was because he had earned a Hornaday Award. It became a little more well-known award in recent years, but believe me, this was far more rare than an Eagle Award and involved far more work when John completed it. There were so few recipients that National actually tracked John down in the 1990s just to give him a free training knot. Toots Nature Area was located near the Four Corners across the road from TTFC, where the STEM Center will be going. This photo shows John, a great lover of snakes, inside one of the buildings at the Four Corners that at that time were serving as staff housing. If you knew him, you wouldn't be surprised by the highly organized area with fire protection equipment, of course. I often joke that Toots' house caught on fire that the fire department wouldn't be able to get in because of all the fire protection equipment in the way. Toot also spoke of a field sports program that was operated in the big field where the Gaga Bowl pit is located now. 
Scouts would work on personal fitness merit badge and other sports related programs. Dick Rieger was one of the directors for this area. So by the 1960s, of the programs that we know today, we see aquatics, scoutcraft, shooting sports, and nature. We also have that extra program, field sports. In part six, we look at the 1970s, where a greater emphasis on merit badge work at camp begins, and camping, of all things, is eliminated as a required badge for Eagle. I'll see you then.